Brewery Life, Jasper here today. Uh, today I want to do a quick video on talking about sparge water acidification. Um, how to acidify your sparge water. A lot of us know uh, our, what we want our mash pHs to be at, 5, 2, 5, 3, um, but we don't talk about the sparge water acidification um, too much. So there's a general rule of thumb with brewers. Um, the old rule of thumb is the 6-2 rule. Uh, that goes for your last runnings. If your last runnings, the pH starts going above 6 or below 2 Play-Doh, you want to cut that last runnings off. That rule's kind of changed um, a little bit to maybe like a 5-5-3 five, five, rule. You don't want your pH to go above 5-5 five, five or above 3 um, or below 3 Play-Doh. A good compromise would be maybe a 5-7-2-5 rule. Don't let your last runnings go above 5-7. Don't um, let them go below 2.5 Play-Doh. So why do we have these rules as a brewer? Because that last runnings actually it has a lot of undesirables in it. It's not just water. That last runnings is actually bad for your beer. So you don't want to over sparge just to get your kettle volume. If you get above definitely the 6-2 rule, those last runnings are uh, above 6 pH, it's actually better to uh, cut the sparge off and top your kettle off with water rather than letting those uh, undesirables and that last runnings go into your beer. You can adjust your kettle uh, gravity by boiling longer or maybe adding some dextrose, but it's important to know that anything above a 6 pH coming out of your mash tun, you want to cut off and not send to your kettle. So what are some of those uh, undesirables and bad things that come out with a high pH in your sparge water? The first one that everyone talks about and knows about is tannins, um, aka polyphenols. So I call tannins polyphenols. Every tannin is a polyphenol. Maybe not every polyphenol is a tannin. So if you hear me say polyphenols um, and you're used to saying tannins in your mind, you can kind of switch them back and forth. So these polyphenols um, can get extracted out of the mash at a higher pH. Um, these can lead to like a change in color of the beer if they get oxidized downstream, kind of like if you push your thumb into an apple, it'll brown, same reaction. They are obviously lead to um, haze uh, formation downstream. If you've seen my filter video, maybe my drop cone video, you hear me talk about the polyphenol protein um, combination that comes out. This is a, a haze forming colloidal stability downstream for your beer. Um, the polyphenol also one of the more famous ones known as catechin um, at 20 parts per million that gives a really astringent, harsh flavor. So they have a lot of flavor impacts on your beer as well. Some other things that that high pH will pull out is silicate. Silicate can combine with calcium downstream and cause haze uh, formations and also ash, some carbonate will get pulled out of your uh, mash tun a little bit more. Um, just as a side note, polyphenols and silicate have a lot of health benefits. Polyphenols are an antioxidant. They could be um, shown to be an oxygen scavenger and actually lead to some flavor stability. They definitely have some health benefits as an antioxidant inside you. Um, it's good for like cancer, Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's. Silicate is really good for the human bones. Um, so if you wanted to brew the healthiest beer possible, it might be said that you want the highest mash pH possible. But maybe one of you guys will run that experiment sometime and let us know how it goes. And I digress. One of the things that I like to point to is how the rise in um, sparge water pHs affect your pH downstream of it. Everyone concentrates on the mash tun, but how does that affect your pHs downstream of the mash tun? Um, if your mash tun is a higher pH, you're going to extract more color out of your mash tun. Um, the polyphenols oxidize and change color. So that's kind of like a double color addition from a higher pH. If you want to make a really light beer, that can be a problem. The higher pH can move on down to the kettle. A higher pH in your boil kettle will uh, cause a little bit lower hop utilization, but the hop bitterness that you get out of your kettle with a lower pH will be more desirable, more of a finer quality bitterness. So it uh, helps the palatability of the bitterness in the kettle. Um, 
A higher pH, if you don't acidify your sparge water, would lead to a worse hot break in the kettle. So you acidify um, your, uh, your sparge water and that lowers your kettle pH to get a better hot break. That helps the uh, polyphenol and protein come out of solution um, so you can whirlpool it out of there and it doesn't lead to haze problems downstream. Um, and then another pH reason downstream would be your final beer pH. If your final beer pH is too high, um, it can lead to maybe a softer tasting beer, a little dull, not a clean crisp, um, a little lower pH will give a clean, cleaner, crisper uh, beer feeling to it. Also the higher pH on a final product of beer um, lends itself to microbial spoilage a, bit, a little bit more. So this is actually one of the reasons we started looking at sparge water acidification. Our mash tun uh, pHs were dead on 5.2. Our last runnings never got above 5.7, but for some reason our final beer pH wasn't getting around the 4.2, which was our goal. It was more around the 4.4 goal. So we actually uh, started working on our sparge water acidification to work on our final beer pH which um, has helped a lot. So if that's something you guys want to try out, um, definitely go for it. The two common ways uh, brewers lower um, their pH in their sparge water is with lactic acid or phosphoric acid. Um, there's a few others, but those are the most two common, commonly used. Um, lactic acid um, can be made naturally by lactobacillus. Some people say it has maybe a little stronger flavor, a little butteriness, sourness to it. Um, whereas a phosphoric acid is more of a neutral flavor. The phosphoric acid on um, the strong ion base lowers the pH without lowering the alkalinity as much as the, the, la the lactic acid. Uh, so there's a couple differences between them. The one thing that you got to be careful about when using phosphoric acid is the precipitation of calcium. So this runs into a problem when you just want to slightly acidify your mash tun. If you get your mash, or I mean, sorry, the sparge water. If you uh, slightly acidify your sparge water to 6 pH, um, calcium can really only stay in solution to about four parts per million, pretty low. It'll precipitate out at that. Um, but if you can acidify down to 5.5 in your sparge water, um, that water can then hold 400 parts per million calcium. So you run into problems using phosphoric if you just want to partly, partially acidify your sparge water down to six. That's why I recommend going down to at least 5.8 to 5.7. That way you know any calcium that you have in your water will stay in the water and not precipitate out. Um, today, we use 85% food grade phosphoric acid here. So now that this lecture is done, let's go see how we get the job done. So we're just getting done mashing in here at the brewery. Um, after mashing, we like to top off our hot um, liquor tank. So that's what we're doing right here is topping off our hot liquor tank with uh, the volumes we want to sparge to. Um, and this is the step that we will add our uh, phosphoric acid to. Alright guys, here's our setup. We're lucky enough to have a port that goes into our hot liquor tank um, in the back of it. So we just have a butterfly into a 90 degree elbow setup um, with a funnel that we could drop in to the hot liquor tank. So this hot liquor tank is uh, vented and it's uh, open to the atmosphere. It's not under pressure. Um, you wouldn't want to do this if the tank is under pressure, dumping acid at face level. You could blow back in your face. Um, so just know you want to wear eye goggles and be really careful um, with this stuff. It's pretty powerful. We use about 210 milliliters for our 10 um, barrels of water here. Um, you might not want to go off that because every water chemistry is different. Um, every uh, buddy's minerals are different and uh, acid's going to react in different ways. So definitely uh, do your own titrations to figure out the dosage that you need at your brewery. So we'll just dump in our 200 
make sure that gets in there. And then I like just to flush it down with some water just to make sure it gets out of that elbow and flushes into the tank. Once that's flushed out, we'll close our butterfly and we know our dose of 85% uh, food grade phosphoric is now in our hot liquor tank. I'll show you what to do next. All right, the last thing I like to do after I dose my acid in my hot liquor tank is recirculate the hot liquor tank for a few minutes just to get a good mix um, through there. So we'll bring the hot liquor tank into the suction side of the pump. We'll put it, the discharge side of the pump going into the spray ball of the hot liquor tank. And we'll turn on the pump about half speed and we'll let that recirculate in there for a couple minutes. So that gave you guys a quick uh, look at how we like to acidulate our sparge water at our brewery here to help us brew the best beer we can. Here's the pH test of just our water before the acid. And here's the final pH test after the acid was added. Well, there you guys go. Thanks for watching, and until next time, cheers.